Uh, this is James Vickers, a uh, first year graduate student in computer science at the University of New Mexico. And I want to do a brief video on talking about my project I did using the movable feast machine for Professor Ackley's uh, artificial light class. So if you need an intro on the movable feast machine, uh, this isn't a video for you, but so I'm just going to jump right in. I've got a grid here with about 25 data on it. And if I hit play, they're just going to diffuse randomly. They don't reproduce uh, and they don't die. That's all fine and good, but when I was first learning about this architecture, I started wondering, you know, since every element has read-write access in the, in the event window um, with no limitations, what happens if I start putting elements in there that just destroy stuff that they see? So I made this element, which is called Eraser. All it does is Per this parameter on the left here, it'll anytime it comes into contact with an atom that's not empty at that distance, so I have it set to 1 right now, so if it hits an adjacent atom that's not empty, it sets it to empty. Now that also means that they'll destroy each other, erasers will destroy each other. So the natural state of a bunch of erasers in a grid like this is there to be one eraser left, which I call the Highlander eraser. Now if I go back and start this over and up the erase radius, now it's going to erase anything in the event window up to distance 4. And this is extremely destructive. Uh, it takes basically no time at all to wipe out this entire grid and then leave one eraser left. So this is kind of the canonical problem that my project tries to address is kind of destructive, mindless elements like this that are either programmed to behave this way or they behave this way because they're malfunctioning. Uh, maybe their code has been corrupted, uh, something like that. So I made an element to combat this called Dynamic Isolator, um, IS. So basically what it does is, it's, these are stationary elements called blocks, and during their events they don't do anything, they just sit there. Um, so if I place one around him, he makes a bubble, which I call an isolator bubble, of a particular radius which is controlled by this parameter. And that determines how far on the inside, or how much distance on the inside is kept empty around that element that's being surrounded by dynamic isolator. So if I lower it, the bubble gets uh, more tight and there's more dynamic isolators in it to where you can fill the entire event window with dynamic isolator except for um, that block. So in this kind of configuration, block never, or in principle, it never sees anything except dynamic isolator uh, during its events so it's isolated. Now if I put more of these on the grid get the same kind of behavior just takes one. So basically what dynamic isolator does is um, during its event if it sees an element an atom that's, a, that's not of its own type and it's not empty it'll write copies of itself to every location in the event window that's at least cell radius away from the scene element, that's this parameter, and um, up, to, up to distance event radius from that scene atom. And that makes these bubbles. Now, these blocks don't diffuse, but the cool thing about dynamic isolator is it can surround things that do diffuse, like data. And then you see how the blocks are getting pushed around? That's happening by the dynamic isolators. Block never moves on its own. So this is what I call a bubble repulsion. When data comes up and a dynamic isolator that's surrounding a block like that sees both the block and the data, basically it's seeing two atoms that are not empty and not dynamic isolator in its event window, it pushes the atom that it's surrounding away from itself. And basically the point of that is it keeps um, these bubbles distinct and separate. It's basically trying to keep um, only one atom in the center of one of these isolator bubbles. So if I let this go for a little bit with some more data, 
basically these block guys get pushed around uh, and they tend to end up in the corners or the edge uh, of the universe. And like see this guy on the top left um, up here, he, he never sees anything else but dynamic isolator in his event window and nothing ever sees him. And so he's basically in a stable state. These other guys, you know, bottom right, um, edges, they, they get pushed around whenever data comes close to them. They get pushed around by the dynamic isolators that are surrounding them in the isolator bubble. Now, dynamic isolator doesn't reproduce per se. It only makes copies of itself in order to surround things. And if, it, if one of them doesn't see any other atom during an event, uh, they'll erase themselves. So they, they only exist if they see other atoms uh, to surround and isolate. So this is fine, but going back to that other example uh, from earlier with data and eraser. So if I put some erasers in here again, and I'll put them erase radius two, like medium powered, and now I put a few isolators, what happens? So I've got a bunch of isolator bubbles that are surrounding both data and eraser because dynamic isolator is type agnostic and it doesn't care what the type of the atom it surrounds and isolates is. It'll do it to any atom that's not itself or empty. So if you look on the right here, the amount of data and eraser has decreased since the start, but at a pretty slow rate. It's pretty rare that an eraser is able to get within distance two, which is what the erase radius is set at, of a data um, because of these bubbles. These bubbles are surrounding it and then keeping it away from other stuff. Um, and this is kind of the, the main, I don't know, use case of dynamic isolator that I saw was it could keep something destructive like eraser uh, away from other stuff that you don't want eraser to erase and that includes other erasers you notice that the population of erasers is basically constant that's because they're also protected from each other and not just data from eraser another interesting thing that dynamic isolator does is um, Something like this. If I put a big block, it's not that big. If I put a big block of something, a uh, big dense group of block, you know, something stationary like that, and I put a single uh, dynamic isolator, what happens? So if I just let that run, nothing happens, right? Block is stationary. If I add a dynamic isolator, what happens? It tears the, the thing of block apart into these kind of individual bubbles like you normally see. Now some of them in the center um, around here have more than one block in an isolator bubble, which is something that dynamic isolator doesn't like. And so it keeps on trying to move those around. But because of the configuration here, the, the spatial configuration, it can't necessarily push those blocks anywhere. The reason for that is that dynamic isolator never, it's very nice to atoms. It never destroys them, uh, nothing like that. So it only, it only do things like swap atoms when it can and doesn't actually destroy stuff. Another part of this too is that if you get a couple of atoms like this that don't diffuse in particular configurations, they don't necessarily get swapped around by dynamic isolator. Um, because there'll be like opposing forces of them that they want to swap them in opposite directions. You can see some of these guys getting moved back and forth, but they never really move anywhere besides two spaces. Now what about if I start upping the erase radius here to three? So this thing will erase anything that's within Manhattan distance 3, which is just shy of the 4 of the event window that it sees. What happens there? Make it a little more sparse. 
So in this configuration, Dynamic Isolator can still keep Eraser in a bubble um, for decent periods of time, but if Eraser gets a couple events in a row, it can delete its entire bubble and escape. And so you'll see these guys, like the guy on the top left, the Eraser, the orange guy, he can stay in a bubble for some period of time, but if he gets lucky, he can erase his bubble and escape. But when he comes up on a data that's in an isolator bubble, he gets surrounded again, generally, and then repelled uh, from other data. And so data are relatively safe under this configuration, even though erasers become more powerful. If I take it a step further, if I up the erase radius like that, you'll see these bubbles only form around erase the eraser until it gets a single event because then it destroys everything in this event window except for itself. Now when data that's surrounded by an isolator bubble comes into or gets near an eraser, that eraser gets surrounded briefly by an isolator bubble but it's immediately destroyed. But even so, data is pretty well able to stay away from these uh, erasers because they're, I, they're dynamic isolators are separating them from it. When they come up on one, their bubble sees them, the data, and the eraser, and can swap them away from eraser, away from the danger. Now, Dynamic Isolator also plays really interestingly with Dreg. So this is Dreg. Um, I'm going to turn these odds down so it spawns more stuff. So basically, you know, Dreg fills the universe with um, things. It fills it with res and other dregs. That's cool, but what happens if I put Dreg into an isolator bubble? Pretty much the same thing. Um, you know, Dreg sees empty space on the inside of the bubble, makes a res, dynamic isolator pushes those that res and that Dreg apart, and eventually you get this really dense universe that's mostly full of dynamic isolator and some res and some Dreg. In this case, just one Dreg. Now the game really changes here if I put in a Dreg and a dynamic isolator with the smallest bubble, the tightest bubble. Now in this case, I have the dreg spawn odds at one and one. But even in that case, dreg sees empty space so rarely that it almost never spawns something. Because the only way it's gonna spawn something is to get two events in a row, really in which it would delete this drag in the center of the bubble here would have to delete one of his dynamic isolators which I have set as one and one so it would have to delete it and then it would have to get another event presumably immediately after that before that dynamic isolator gets replaced by its um, comrades and then make another res or drag there it doesn't happen very often, even on these one and one odds, where a dreg gets two events in a row like that without being interrupted. And so, its ability to reproduce is greatly limited, because it almost never sees free space. This is kind of confusing for dreg, because in dreg's eyes, the universe is basically full, because its event window is always full. And yeah, that's about it. So, uh, Dynamic Isolator also works with a lot of other stuff. Um, like I said, it's type agnostic, so it'll play with just about anything. Um, a lot of elements that reproduce, you know, Dynamic Isolator doesn't do anything particularly interesting with them because if they fill up a lot of space in the grid, there's not much Dynamic Isolator can do to separate them. Um, Like, for example, fish. If I put fish on the grid with dynamic isolator, it's not that interesting. Although, if I have it set to a type bubble again, fish 
won't reproduce to a um, a non-empty site, so fish does nothing. But if I give them just any amount of space, fish will reproduce, and this will eventually fill the whole grid with fish and dynamic isolator. But it greatly limits the amount of fish that can be around. Um, But in the end, since Dynamic Isolator never destroys anything, the whole world gets overrun with fish. And this is a common theme where Dynamic Isolator is kind of a, a kind element, never destroys stuff. And so anything that will make a bunch of elements like that and Dynamic Isolator will destroy itself uh, will overrun the grid. So yeah, that's about it. Um, the, you know, the point of the research, again, was to see if you could make an element that keeps atoms from seeing each other in a single event window. And the adversary that I used to show that is Eraser, um, which in the pathological case destroys everything in its event window. So this just, you know, as a final demo, this just kind of shows how a single data in this kind of shark tank of uh, fully powered erasers can still survive and wander around uh, and not get killed for pretty long periods of time. Uh, it really just depends on how many erasers it runs into at once, but it's actually pretty well protected because when it comes up on one, other dynamic isolators surround it and then push it back. And data is fairly safe like this uh, for long periods. And the results in the paper show that. Um, so yeah, thanks for listening. Uh, catch you later.